Okay, so here we are today for the Days of Elder and a presentation about the Elder Tree. Today, <clears throat> what is it, the 14th of September 2023 is the day that we transition from the Days of Blackthorn into the Days of the Elder Tree. So this presentation that I'm going to give is about the law of the elder and looking also at the medicine of the elder tree. And I chose the Liberty Cap mushroom, better known as magic mushroom or the psilocybin mushroom, and also the wild flower vervain, because it's in flower at this time of year. I chose the Liberty Cap mushroom because it also fruits at this time of year or during the days of elder traditionally. So I'll just bring up my PowerPoint presentation and talk us through some pictures. Okay, so <clears throat> the lighting is poor. So the elder tree, <clears throat> as far as star law goes, or as the sun's journey along the ecliptic in a year, elder tree governs the days between the 21st degree of Virgo and then to the ninth degree of Libra. It's actually a tree of balance because it has nine degrees in Virgo and nine degrees in Libra, and the midpoint is the autumn equinox. So that's the important thing as far as the sun goes with uh, the days of Elder. Now, earlier this year, in the beginning of August, I gave a presentation at the Goddess Conference in Glastonbury and in the beginning of August. And every year they have a different theme so the theme for this year was the crone goddess. And I gave a talk about the elder mother. So a lot of this material is fresh in my head because that was barely a month ago that I did this in Glastonbury. Now, um, in many ways, the goddess is always in her prime. So seeing her as a maiden or as a crone is questionable in, in that perspective because she's always in her prime. So when we talk about a maiden goddess or an old crone hag grandmother goddess, what does that really mean? Well, it, it can only make sense if we're talking about time and the progression of time. So it, it's... It's the idea of, although the goddess is ever present and in her prime, seasonally, she can be a young flower maiden and she can gradually age into autumn and winter. So that's how the elder mother plays out, if you like, certainly in Celtic mythology and also in the Oum itself. Just to recap then, so there is this basic cross, which is at the top, the yew tree, and at the bottom, the apple tree, is the winter solstice and the summer solstice. And then on the left, you can see the elder, and on the right, the ash. So that's the spring equinox and the autumn equinox. So the elder tree is part of this cross, which is called the Sun Cross. Nothing to do with Christianity. It's, it's the four stations of the sun in the circle of the year. So this is an absolute, as we were discussing a little while ago, regardless of what calendar system that's being used, Julian calendar or Gregorian calendar, they're man-made things. But the winter solstice, spring equinox, summer solstice, autumn equinox are constant. They're to do with Earth orbiting around the sun, and they're, they're a fixed timepiece, if you like. You know, there's only one moment of the year when it's winter solstice and so on. But equally, there's only one moment 
of the year when there's autumn equinox, and that's during the days of elder. So this diagram here, you'll see a horizontal bar near the top, and it's shaded underneath that horizontal bar. On the left-hand side, you can see it says ash for the ash tree and the arrow pointing up off screen. That's the spring equinox going through the ash tree. So on the right-hand side, um, you can see an arrow going downwards and the horizontal bar goes through the center of the days of elder. So that's the autumn equinox. So the elder tree oversees the sun and by default initiates going into initiation, descending into the darker parts of the year, darker seasons of the year. So looking at elder on the right hand side, the first nine degrees, the white part of elder is Virgo. It's the last nine degrees of Virgo. And the, the second lot of nine degrees, the shaded area is in Libra. You know, so each tree has 18 degrees. Elder and ash are divided by light and dark. They're the days of equinox. They're quite magical. So elder is that holds that moment. And for, the, for this year, it corresponds with the 23rd of September. That's the equinox, autumn equinox time. And then from that moment, we've descended into the months of darkness. And in the next um, Zoom session, we'll be looking at the pine tree. And that's the beginning of the fourth acma, which is all about the wild hunt and the wild hunt going into the realm of death and the other world and rebirth after death at winter solstice, which is the yew tree at the bottom. So after the rebirth with the yew tree, a brand new OM cycle begins with the birch tree and the rising of energy back up again. So right now we're about to plunge down into the wild hunt and go galloping across the wild heath of gorse and heather to the aspen trees and the yew tree. So <clears throat> this diagram then, I finally coloured it in, um, but it's a iconography or icon based on star law, but it's also the Owen trees. So broom, blackthorn and elder play the part of the triple goddess of the Oem Grove, it's just natural star law and tree law. And you can see that all three of them have a foot on the 30 degrees of Virgo. So Broom is mostly Leo the lion, but she does have her foot on the first few days of Virgo. So she's the Virgo maiden. Blackthorn, the serial goddess, the mother goddess is completely Virgo. She's both her feet are fully on Virgo. And Elder then, today, you can see how she is balancing nine degrees in Virgo and nine degrees in Libra. And um, she's veiled, and that veiling is quite deliberate for Celtic mythology, but the, the line of her veiling is the autumn equinox. So one half of her is in the summer months, if you like, and the other half of her is in the winter months. So she's holding that, that balance. Now, an interesting pattern is that in the tarot cards, the major arcana, the card that is called strength is always a maiden and a lion. So that's played out with broom. You, the maiden is Virgo and Leo the lion. So Leo and Virgo is the strength card. Now, equally, the same tarot imagery with elder is you have the maiden with the scales. And that's the tarot trump justice. You know, the weighing of the scales. And, and so elder plays that character. You know, she's, she's blind justice. Uh, interestingly, um, some of the names for the elder tree are um, old lady, um, the elder mother, 
is also known as the tree of doom. And the old meaning of the word doom is judgment. You know, it's the day of judgment. It's the day of doom. So she is there, this kind of figure with the scales um, in Egyptian mythology to weigh the heart of somebody as they enter into the other world. You know, there's this weighing of the heart ceremony. And that kind of star laws played out with Libra. But significantly, um, also Virgo as, as the, the goddess of the mystery traditions, um, the veil of the priestess or the high priestess is that which is hidden and is only there for those that are going into the initiation. So I've got a play going on ahead. So the, the people that aren't doing the initiation can't see beyond the veil. So she represents the mysteries, you know, and it's only those that are going to enter into the mysteries that will go through the veil. So she, Elder is playing that role as well. So um, in Gaelic mythology, uh, there is a old lady figure in Scots Gaelic mythology and she doesn't have a name as such um, she's just called the washer of the ford now this is a poem I'm going to read it actually I, I wrote it down I've been meaning to read it for a long time um, Fiona MacLeod is a fascinating writer from the 1800s it's actually a uh, the female muse of a man called William Sharp. And William Sharp was a member of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. He was a psychic and he worked as a psychic for W.B. Yeats and other members of the Golden Dawn. But the, I wouldn't say that Fiona, Fiona MacLeod was a writing pseudonym. You know, she's a spirit in her own right. And she... It's almost like William Sharp channeled her. Anyway, all of her writings are about traditional folklore, traditional Celtic mythology of the Scottish Highlands. So um, it's not so much the Gaelic people of Ireland, but the Scots Gaelic people. Anyway... I'll read this poem, and the washer of the ford is a bit of a scary character. She does represent death, um, and the old goddess of winter, the Kaliak, uh, is that. And so she's a personification of the Kaliak, you know. Um, but we'll look a bit more in detail at her. But if you dream or have a vision of an old lady at the ford of a river and she's washing your clothes, it means you're gonna die. It means because she, she's washing your clothes because you don't need them anymore. And, mm. and that's that's the nicer version of the dream. The more horrific, you know, Scottish mythology, Scottish imagination is she's hacking up bones and chopping up bodies in the river with a sword. And it's because the people no longer need their bodies. <laughs> she's, she's washing their flesh and bones. And so this is the washer at the ford. She's scary. Um, but if you're going into initiation, there has to symbolically be a death of the old. You can't have a rebirth without a death of the old. So that's what's going on. So... Before the, the ultimate death, there's lots of little deaths and rites of initiation are part of that. So anyway, this is the poem by Fiona MacLeod and it's called The Washer of the Ford. There is a lonely stream afar in a lone dim land. It has white dust for a shore. It has white bones that strew the strand. The only thing that liveth there is a naked leaping sword. 
but I, who a seer am, I have seen the whirling hand of the washer of the ford. A shadowy shape of cloud and mist, of gloom and dusk, she stands the washer of the ford. She laughs at times and strews the dust through the hollow of her hands. She counts the sins of all men there and slays the red-stained horde. The ghosts of all the sins of men must know the whirling sword of the washer of the ford. She stoops and laughs when in the dust she sees a writhing limb. Go back into the ford, she says, and hither and thither swim. Then I shall wash you white as snow and shall take you by the hand and slay you there in silence with this my whirling brand and trample you into the dust of this white windless sand. This is the laughing word of the washer of the ford along the silent strand. So that's Fiona MacLeod, but it gives you an idea of the washer of the ford, you know, and that that that's played out by Elder, you know, and the cutting away of all that which no longer serves you, you know. So a lot of people want a new life or rebirth or, or you know, they're, they're, they're looking for a new change and stuff, but it's about being, yeah, but you've got to cut away the old as well. And so she's that, she's the seasonal hag you know she's the autumn she's falling into winter and in ireland uh, no not ireland in scotland um she's known as the kayak uh some people say kayak sounds like a canoe um but i think it's to do with regional dialects I'm looking for my bit of paper now so a curious thing then, um, throughout the winter time, uh, the goddess in Scotland is personified as this old hag, and her name is the Kaliak. Uh, she's also known as, um, uh, what's, Bera is her name, and Barogue, but she's almost an uh, aspect of the goddess Bridget, there's a connection between the two. So from autumn equinox into the winter months, the Kaliak or old, old lady um, governs the months in the winter time until in bulk. And at in bulk, Bridget and her flame brings the return of spring. You know, so there's almost like the, the young, bright goddess of spring is the opposite to the old lady of winter, you know, and there's a relationship of polarity between the two of them. Now, curiously, the main symbol of Bridie or Bridget, uh, in Scotland it's Bridie, um, is a Bridie's cross. It's very familiar, often shown like this, but the more traditional version is a triple a uh, three-legged uh, cross or triskel, triskelion. But here's a thing hidden in plain sight, is it's made of straw. It's made of straw. Straw is a byproduct of harvest time. You know, straw's what's left once all the wheat has been harvested. You're left with all this straw, you know, so... It's something of the end of harvest carried through the winter time, representing the goddess of Imbolc, the goddess of spring. You know, that there is this polarity relationship between Virgo and the beginning of spring. Now, one name for the old winter goddess is Kaliak Faisa. Faisa means knowledge or wisdom. 
So Kaliak Faisa is like the old veiled one of knowledge or the old woman of wisdom. But Virgo is directly opposite Pisces, which is the salmon weir. And the uh, salmon of wisdom is in Gaelic is the Bradan Faisa. So on either side, you've got Faisa. Whether it's Virgo or Pisces, there's Faisa, there's wisdom, there's knowledge. You know, so it's the knowledge of the old lady or there's the knowledge of the salmon. You know, either way, there's that polarity thing being played out. So the elder tree medicine. Got too many pieces of paper. Okay. So there's lots of medicine that can be got from the elder tree, of course. Um, but the main one, you can use the bark. I think the bark can be used for headaches. Um, and you can dry the leaves and use those as well. But the, the main medicine is the berries, of course. And the berries are a super powerful fruit um that more often than not people will make into a syrup like an elderberry syrup cordial or you can just drink it as a tea you know and you can get dried elderberries online all year round you know it's a way of getting it all year round and so you can drink it as a tea by rehydrating the dried berries any time of the year most whole food shops sell the uh, dried elderberries. So the benefits that elderberries give, naturally very high in vitamin C. It's a powerful antioxidant. It's anti-inflammatory. It boosts the immune system. It's good for lungs and breathing. So any congestion on the lungs, it's going to help with that. It helps to lessen stress. So does the magic mushroom and the vein. It's a common theme running through today. It protects the heart. It lowers blood sugar levels, lowers high blood pressure. It helps with hay fever, allergy relief. And it's just generally good for colds and flus and stuff, you know. So it's an all round very powerful medicine to have. Now, I know people that make, they, they get the fresh berries, boil it up add a load of sugar or honey and have that syrup and they use that to get themselves through the winter with coughs and colds and and even sad you know the seasonal affective disorder it, it helps with that um but like i say you can buy the dried berries all year round online or in a whole food shop so i couldn't find a mushroom that was specifically unique to the elder tree um, like some trees have mushrooms that are symbiont and only grow on that tree, but the elder will grow pretty much everywhere and doesn't seem to have a, a, a symbiont mushroom specific to it. So I chose the Liberty Cap uh, mushroom because, generally speaking, it fruits at this time of year during the days of elder you know, over the autumn equinox is when normally it starts to pop up, generally mid to late September. Um, I, I have read on websites that some people are saying it's getting later and later. Some people are saying it's turning up in October instead of September. But um, whether that's to do with global warming or whatever seasonal changes, I don't know. But traditionally, September... So this time of year. Uh, so what can we say about the Liberty Cap? Here's a thing then. Um, it is illegal at the moment. It's uh, in England, it's classified as a class A drug. And in America, the, they call, what do they call it? They call it um, something else. But it's like class A drug. Series one or something. I, I don't know. Anyway, it's only been illegal since 1971. So up until 1971, it wasn't illegal at all anywhere. You know, it was almost a very conservative reaction against 
the psychedelic culture of the hippies of the 1960s you know it was more that you know and they it kind of got lumped in with lsd and and more nasty chemical type stuff that this terrible terrible mushroom had to be banned and made illegal as well but that was for the united nations of which england and america are part of but you know it's still legal in some countries it's legal in jamaica it's legal in brazil you know it's not illegal everywhere and just in the last 10 years or so various places have started to decriminalize it there's there's some parts of america now that have decriminalized it some of the major cities like seattle and washington Colorado, you know, it's it's not illegal everywhere. And like I said, it's only been illegal since 1971. Uh, you know, it stirs up um, a question about lots of things, like how dangerous is it really? And what does it do? Um, I'd be thinking about it a lot today, you know, um, and I would compare it with alcohol. You know, alcohol does, has done and continues to do more damage to culture and society than anything else. And it's perfectly legal. You know, in England, teenagers can start binge drinking alcohol as often as they want to as soon as they're 18. Perfectly legal. You know, the synapses of the brain do not settle down into stability until you're 40 years old. Until that moment, your brain is very plasticine, adaptable, fluid. And all of the what it means by the synapses settling down is that whatever mentality you have developed in your 20s and 30s, by the time you're in your 40s, that's your that's you, that's your personality. Your synapses have settled into that worldview, you know? And so those early decades of being a teenager, 20s and 30s, so important. And the damage caused by alcohol to that monstrous, way, way, way more monstrous than what can be done with fly agaric mushrooms or Liberty cap mushrooms, you know. Um, here's a thing, as it's a bit conspiracy theory. And hand on heart, I haven't even tried Liberty Cap mushrooms. I have tried fly agaric, but I haven't yet tried Liberty Cap, but I'm open to it. I do have a long background in psychic research and stuff. Um and I, th I think you can do everything, you can do all psychic stuff sober. But here's a the thing then, um, from what I can gather, from what I've read, from what I've watched on YouTube uh, and talks I've been to, shamanic mushrooms, sacred mushrooms, like the fly agaric and the liberty cap, they open people up. They open people up to the microcosm and the macrocosm and the interconnectedness of all things. And the medicine that they give people helps bring people back to balance, which I'll talk about in a minute. Alcohol, on the other hand, shuts people down. You know, I drank way too much in my 20s. I had the shakes in the mornings because I drank too much. You know, I managed to... I'm not a teetotaler, but I sorted myself out in my 30s. You cannot be empathic with anybody. You cannot even trust your intuition when you've got a hangover. You know, you just can't. When you've got a hangover, you've got a hangover. Your, your upper cauldron is shut down until you get over that hangover. Uh, alcohol so disconnects you. Disconnects you. And if you're living that for years you know like through your 20s and your 30s if you're living that there's a massive disconnection from spirit you know and the resulting feelings are um depression 
fear, anxiety, stress, not belonging, you know, and that malcontent can explode in anger and bitterness, you know. So this is the effect on your synapses that don't settle down until you're 40 years old, you know. So that's what I mean by alcohol, disconnecting people, keeping people scared monkeys running away from everything and being worried about everything. The mushrooms, on the other hand, what do they do? That they, they connect people. And I'm not talking about taking lots of them to have a big visionary experience. I'm talking about the modern health and well-being observations of fly agar uh, of psilocybin is being used to help people with stress, with anxiety, with post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, so it's bringing people back to feeling calm, you know, finding a connection with spirit, finding a connection with the world around them. Very, very different to alcohol, which disconnects people, you know. So anyway, here's an interesting insight. Look at this, a distinctive character of the Liberty Cap mushroom the psilocybin mushroom, the reason it's called Liberty Cap is because of that nipple on the top. <laughs> Looks like a pair of boobs with this photo. But, but the nipple on the top is why it's called Liberty Cap. And the Liberty Cap is a real thing. You know, it's a, a type of headdress from the ancient mystery traditions. It's called a Phrygian Cap or the Liberty Cap, you know. And it's on lots of iconography of different gods and goddesses. And the liberty cap represented freedom. On a mundane level, it could be that someone was a slave and then they were liberated and they were a free person, no longer a slave. So they would wear the liberty cap as their social status. <laughs> that, were, that They were no longer a slave. They were a free person. But also in the mystery traditions, the liberty cap can represent freedom. That is, you're no longer a muggle. You're no longer stuck in the ignorance of the mundane worldview, but that you've been through initiations and your eyes are open. You're liberated, you know. So your your liberty cap in that way, you know, it's a it's a symbol that your eyes are now wide open. You're free you're free from the illusions of the world. You know, you, you understand life after death and all of that kind of stuff. But look at these photos then. So on the left is a god called Attis from the mysteries of the mother goddess Sybil, Cybor Sybil. Um, he's got the liberty cap hat on. On the right is Mithras wearing his liberty cap. You know, <laughs> there's even... A goddess, the goddess Hecate herself, wears a liberty cap. You know, this figure with the spikes, the spikes represent the sunbeams, it's called a Mithras, Mithra, and she's wearing the liberty cap as well. You know, many of the mystery traditions used it. And here you've got Mithra slaying the bull. He's wearing his liberty cap. And on either side of him are the two twins of Gemini. And they're wearing liberty caps as well. You know, so it's kind of this symbol almost of the freedom attained once one knows how to delve in and out of the other world or in and out of the realities or, you know, whatever the mystery schools gave people, that they are now free people. They're not slaves to the mundane world. So... The flower for this time of year, because it's in bloom at this time of year, is vervain. Vervain has a lot of uh, witchcraft lore, which can't go into. There isn't time. But next year, might spend the year looking at cunning magic and witchcraft and so on. But a beautiful, tiny, tiny little flower is vervain. There are about 150 different species so they don't all look the same, but they're all part of the same family. And they're a big medicine, but they correspond now with the days of elder 
because it's still in bloom. Not many flowers are now, they're fading away as we go into autumn. You can buy vervain tea on um, line easy enough. Um, but I forgot to say with the, the modern uses of the Liberty Cap mushroom, it's mainly used for antidepressant, anti-anxiety, stress, post-traumatic stress disorder. I might have said that. The vervain then is taken for um, general aches and pains, anxiety, depression, headaches, insomnia, throat infections, and urinary tract infections. Um, there are, like I said, about 150 different types of vervain. This is an American variety called blue vervain, and apparently it's the most effective. So it's the most popular of the verveins, but it's not native to Europe, but it's in America. But, you know, anyone can buy it now. But all of the verveins, um, there's also verbena. Verbena and verbane are the same plant. It's just a different pronunciation. I think verbena might be... Um, Latin and it just means sacred plant. Uh, again, it was used for creating sacred spaces and stuff. So just to wrap it up then, um, thinking about the elder tree and what it gives people to get them through the winter, you know, all, all those powerful antioxidants, vitamins and immune boosting stuff to help people in the cold winter months it really is the wisdom of the old lady the Kaliak Pfizer the wise veiled one and thinking about the synapses not settling down until you're in your 40s you know that the wisdom of the elder tree more than anything seems to be about looking after the younger generation, you know, having the wisdom of experience uh, and taking care and passing that on to the younger generation, which we're not doing, or, you know, we're waking up slowly and talking about 18 year olds who start binge drinking. And I did, you know, because you're trying to get off with the opposite sex and you're going to nightclubs and it, it loosens all the inhibitions and all of that. Thing, but it can turn into two decades of doing bad stuff to your soul, you know? Anyway, I, I am a live and let live type person, and I think people need to burn their own fingers and get experience that way. But the wisdom of the wise old one looking after the younger generation, for me, that's elder opening the veil for the initiates to go into the... Uh, rites of initiation, which are the next phase of the Owen, which is the fourth Akma and the wild hunt across Sawain and so on. So anyway, I'll stop sharing and you can put your microphones back on. And we can chat about some of those ideas. That drawing of the Kali is just incredible. <laughs> Beautiful. She's her eyes alone. That's a real lady. She died in 1963. You um, did a great cool job there. And her name is Margaret Murray. And mm -hmm. when she was a hundred, mm -hmm. she wrote her biography mm -hmm. and she called her biography My First Hundred Years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love Margaret Murray. I, I love her to pieces. So, yeah. You're blessed to have done that. I love the drawing that you showed after, whilst you were reading the poem. Yes. Is that your drawing? Yes. Oh, that's, that's really, really special. Yeah. It's now a much more finished drawing, but I quite like keeping hold of some of the early sketches. So, so so that was an early sketch of what's now much more finished artwork. Um, yeah. But again, it represents the older lady. So there's another project I've been involved in called the Well Maidens of the Summerlands. Mm -hmm. And that face was wow. meant to represent Morgan Le Fay, 
in mm. her old years. And mm. it's, actually, it's actually a portrait of an Irish lady called Maud Gone. And Maud Gone, when she was younger, was the muse of W.B. Yeats. Right. But, but she was a proper Irish freedom fighter. And I like that kind of face mm -hmm. for Morgan Le Fay. Perfect. Yeah, yeah really nice. Pose. I don't have a picture of the washer of the Ford, so I thought she'd do. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those stats, those stats are brutal, one. aren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah. So the nicer version of that is you dream she's washing your clothes. <laughs> on your flesh. Yeah. It's really lovely to hear the magic mushroom spoken about like that. And um, I, I took magic mushrooms quite a lot when I was younger. My friend and I used to go and collect them really ridiculous because we were young and really silly and we didn't really know what we were looking for but it's the only time in my life that I really remember that dissolving of and we took way too many we used to make tea and we took way too many but that dissolving of reality and actually had to be removed from a couple of places on a couple of occasions because of weird behavior. But <laughs> that dissolving, I wish, you know, I'm too scared to do it now, I think. I think oh. I've lost that. I, maybe I should try it again. But you get all uptight as you get older, don't you? And yes, it's lovely to hear it talked about like that, not as this sort of, it's illegal, it's illegal, you know, it's... Mm -hmm. So you've had the psilocybin tea? Made myself, yeah, yeah. from the yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I've had a long that. time, long, long yeah, time. Americans are all uptight about that. We get no, all uptight not. about those drugs. <laughs> they yeah. are. I, uh, I'm, really. it's I'm a recovering alcoholic addict, and I've been clean and sober for 40 years. But Congrats. back in the day, man, I blew my brains out with psychedelics. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, I've I've got stories, but I'll I'll spare you. However, <laughs> um, you know, I've been considering um, now that I'm sort of forty years on, um, I've been considering using um, psilocybin therapy for therapy because um, I'm I'm always in therapy. I love being in therapy. Anyway, um, uh. Well, I was a therapist at one point, so we have to be in therapy anyway. Um, you know, and I've been talking to my therapist about this. I'm a little worried because it's been 40 years and I don't want to trigger any morphine pathways. Um, but I'm really considering that because, uh, you know, I would like to be able to use psilocybin responsibly. I've never used drugs responsibly. Well, well, I I believe that psilis, I believe that psychedelics can be used responsibly. Yeah. Anything else? Are they using microdosing? But I've never now? used anything responsibly ever. <laughs> it's always been I'm an addict, so more is better. Um, and um, so uh, but I'd really I'd really like to try it. I just I'm I've been considering it for about a year now, <laughs> and you know there's still a part of me that's that's um. A little nervous about that but i i uh i feel the need to disconnect a little from reality and and mm -hmm. kind of explore who i am now as opposed to the crazy person i was amy when if you, i was 15 through 17. amy if you do a bit of research online people are doing psilocybin therapy microdosing it's tiny amounts mm -hmm. but it's it's repairing mm -hmm all the damage that alcoholism has done to people. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's almost mm -hmm. reconnecting what was disconnected and, and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Synaptic pathways yeah. are being repaired. Yes, that's very because interesting. The also year, MDMA. The years of alcohol have created... Yeah, people are doing that around here. Yeah, stress mm -hmm. and... A lot of that microdosing going on. Yeah. Microdosing is the key thing, you know, it's it's not a a leisure activity, you know, it's medicine. Yeah. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. You can't go into it with a fun attitude, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have a lot well, of fun. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to do it in a <laughs> controlled environment because yes. if I were left to my own devices, I mean, I know myself well enough, despite 40 years of sobriety. If I were left to my own devices, it would be knock that bottle of psilocybin back. Just <laughs> so I have to, somebody else would have to administer it in a controlled setting for me to really um, get anything out of it. Because I'm I'm concerned about misuse. It, there's no but way, anyway. there's no beating about the bush with it, really. My dad pretty much killed himself with whiskey you know uh -huh. but by, by the uh -huh. time he died he was in his late 70s and he was drinking a liter and a half mm -hmm. of whiskey every day you know it, it was his way out really but that that is legal that's perfectly legal I know. So, <laughs> and 18 year olds getting off their heads every day on binge drinking alcohol is legal perfectly legal mm -hmm. and these mushrooms are not it's just ridiculous really you know the damage really... caused by alcohol mm. so, yeah i know it's crazy well. but it's getting don't get me started on the politics but <laughs> um... <laughs> no, no but i agree <laughs> mm. but you know these sacred mushrooms that i they are meant to be under the wisdom of the old ancestors, the old elders who know what they're doing. It's not meant to be get off your face for the weekend either. Yeah. No, it, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a sacred. We're the masters. Yeah, it's a sacred mushroom for ceremony or, or something, isn't it? You know. Um, well, yeah. I agree. And alcohol just dulls. It, it disconnects. It shuts you down. You know, so, yes. psilocybin and muscamol, which comes from fly agaric, they open you up. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. And and too much can be ridiculous as well. You know, you can have an out of body experience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could get yourself run. See, I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> floating away. You know? But we're not <laughs> taught about any of this. Are we? We're not taught about any of it when we're growing up. No one guides us yeah. through any of this stuff no one tells us that if you drink a pint of beer and a pint of whiskey it's not the same nobody teaches us nobody's telling us about any of these plants you know and sort of guiding us through choices to be made about what we can use and what we can't I mean it's such vital information yeah it's just like, like it's got, you know I mean Britain is terrible with alcohol I think it's we've got yeah. such a loutish kind of let's get it down you know the more that yeah you know, it's there's no yeah. sort of I don't know and then they can't move the next day yeah. <laughs> it's the same way in America alcohol uh -huh. is just way too prevalent and too caught up in the societal mores uh -huh. so and you can't you can't compare these mushrooms to things like ecstasy and LSD, heroin and cocaine. That they're not they're not they're not the same. They're different, you know. Yeah, they're sacred. Yes, and they are meant to be medicine. Yeah, and they do open you up. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many things that do. They're not as powerful, but, you know, chewing ivy leaves or, or smoking mugwort or drinking mugwort. There's lots of things that help alter the brain slightly, you know. And didn't the, the old, like, Socrates and the old uh, Roman Gre gecko, gecko, <laughs> Greco um, masters mix... Um, their wine with ivy leaves for the hallucinogenic effect yeah yeah it's pretty incredible that but they knew about it then i'm a bit of um a fraud in a sense you know because i'm quite a lightweight i i hardly ever drink alcohol at all now and um i have chewed ivy and last winter i microdosed fly agaric mushrooms because i found one um <laughs> 
<laughs> but All it had to do was happen upon your bath, huh? Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, I'm, I'm quite innocent. I haven't done heroin. I haven't done coke or, or anything like that, you know? You're not missing anything. Um, yeah. Don't know where I was going with that. But oh, so this whole acma from vine, ivy, broom, blackthorn and elder, all of it is singing a song about these mystery traditions and their wine and the things they put in their wine. And it all seems to be mind altering stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And it's yeah. more dark goddesses, it seems to me, that prevail at this time of the year. Yeah. Don't does anyone agree with that or no? Well, yep. Following the seasons, you know, so the flower maiden is turning into this autumn lady, turning into a winter lady. Mm -hmm. So there also with age, there's wisdom, isn't there? So the goddess is the Kaliak, Pfizer, the, the old wise woman, you know, so she's learned life's experiences and she has the knowledge of what to put in the cauldron. So it's Caridwen mm -hmm. and yes. stuff, you know. Yes. What do you put in the cauldron to help people connect to the spirit world? You know, yeah. And I, I don't know what the recipe would be. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I get probably sure. different different tribes had their own systems, and the druids had their own systems, and you know, but they were certainly more interested in connecting with spirit than getting off their heads. I think. Oh, you know, those old druids used to do those vision walks, right? Yeah. So. And the the bards were looking for poetic inspiration that they weren't looking to get off their heads, you know? No. They, mm -hmm. So there's going into it with a sacred intent, isn't there? Um, mm -hmm. Going into it from your right. heart. Yeah. Not to, you're not doing it to escape reality. Mm. you know mm. it's a much better way to go <laughs> i don't know i have to just keep that in mind because for me it's a it's still an escape from reality i mean just because i'm sober doesn't mean i don't try to you yeah know, but do things that'll take me into a different headspace yeah someone's reality that yeah but what their normality could be quite disconnected from spirit, but that's their normality. You know, yeah. so doing things in your life that help you connect, whether it's meditating, microdosing or whatever, but if you're making spiritual connections, then you don't, you won't feel the need to escape your normality. There you go. Will there you? you go. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if your normality is something you want to escape, there's something not right <laughs> on that note <laughs> God. um thank you <laughs> you're welcome i'm just making it up as i go along um i know <laughs> it's okay <laughs> it works um, if you turn your microphones off we'll do our meditation and i'll stop recording mm -hmm.